Down Vishnu Pad Padamam Saparaja Kacharya Asadu Tarasata Shishimari. His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Kijai. Down Vishnu Pad Padamam Saparaja Kacharya Asadu Tarasata Shishimari. Shringa Guru Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Kijai. Ananti Kodi Vaishnavinda Kijai. Iskan BBT Founder Acharya Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Namacharya Shila Haridas Thakur Kijai. Premsiko Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadigur Bhaktivinda Kijai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopi Gopi Nash, Shamakund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Navadvip Dham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, New Dwarka Dham Ki Jai. Their Divine Lordship Shri Shri Rukmini Dwarkadish Ki Jai. Their Divine Lordship Shri Shri Jagannath Baladeva and Shri Mati Subhadra Ki Jai. Their Divine Lordship Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai. Grantara Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jimunamai Gangamai Ki Jai, Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Harinam Sankirtan Jaga Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Transcendental Prashadam Distribution Ki Jai, Gaur Pramananda Hare Haribo. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories to the Sama devotees, Hare Krishna. All glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the Second Canto, The Cosmic Manifestation, Chapter 9, Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. It's uh, 299, yeah, text number 9. And today we'll discuss the topic of Sanklesha. So this talks about the five kinds of material afflictions that are going to be described in this particular verse and purport. So it's interesting how there's always five kinds of something. There's five different kinds of miseries. There's five kinds of ignorance. There's five kinds of this and that. And one time, um, Satsuk Maharaj asked you the Prabhupada in a letter. He said, why is this? Why do they have so many five kinds of these and that and this? And Prabhupada said, it's been a custom. It's you know, it's kind of hard to find out the reason how it started, but he said it's a custom. Just like when you do it pujas or fire sacrifices, you have to have five different kinds of items, like five jewels, five types of this and that and that. But he said, we're just satisfied with five types of powders. So you see, like, Rabindranath just does different color powders. That's what we do, basically. But anyway, we're going to discuss about these five kinds of different things and and just kind of going down that path, we'll see how it, what we can learn from this. So this is a, the verse today. Tasmai salokam bhagavan sabajitaha. Salokam bhagavan sabajitaha. Sandarshayam ashaparamam nayat param. Vyapeta sanklesha vimoha sadvasam Swadrista vadbir purushar abhistut tamaro Tasmai swalokam bhagavan sabajitaha Sandarsha yamasha paramam nayat Param. Vyapeta sanklesha vimoha sadvasam. Swadrista vadbir purushar abhishtutamaro. Swadrista 
Tasmai Swalokam Bhagavan Sabajita Sandarshayama Shaparamam Nayat Param Vyapeta Sanklesha Vimoha Sadvasam Swadvista Vadbir Purushar Abhish to Tatmaro Tasma Salokam Bhagavan Vaishnavis. Das Maisva Lokam Bhagavan Sabajita. Sandasha Yamasha Paramam Nayat Param. Vapita Sankresha Vimoha Sadvasam. Okay, is it hard to read? What's that? Oh no, I just copied and pasted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, we'll check. Oh, this arrow is not there? Wow, that's weird. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's right. I don't know how that got there. That's weird. Okay. Tasmai unto him. So Lokam, his own planet or abode. Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. Sabajitaha, being pleased by the presence of Brahma. Sandarsayamasa, manifested. Param, the supreme. Na, not. Yat, of which. Param, further supreme. Vyapeta, completely given up. Sanklesha, five kinds of material afflictions. Vimoha, without illusion. Sadvasam, fear of material existence. Swadrista, Vadbi, by those who have perfectly realized the self. Purushai, by persons. Abhistutam, worshipped by. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Personality of Godhead, being thus very much satisfied with the penance of Lord Brahma, was pleased to manifest his personal abode. Vaikuntha, the supreme planet above all others. 
This transcendental abode of the Lord is adored by all self-realized persons, freed from all kinds of miseries and fear of illusory existence. Purport. The troubles of penance accepted by Lord Brahma were certainly in the line of devotional service, bhakti. Otherwise, there was no chance that Vaikuntha or Svalokam, the Lord's personal abodes, would become visible to Brahmaji. The personal abodes of the Lord, known as the Vaikuntas, are neither mythical nor material, as conceived by the impersonalists. But realization of the transcendental abodes of the Lord is possible only through devotional service. And thus, the devotees enter into such abodes. There is undoubtedly trouble in executing penance. But the trouble accepted in executing bhakti yoga is transcendental happiness from the very beginning. Whereas the trouble of penance in other processes of self-realization, jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, etc., without any vaikuntha realization, ends in trouble only and nothing more. There is no profit in beating husks without grains. Similarly, there is no profit in executing troublesome penances other than bhakti yoga for self-realization. Executing bhakti yoga is exactly like sitting on the lotus sprouted out of the abdomen of the transcendental personality of Godhead. For Lord Brahma was seated there. Brahmaji was able to please the Lord, and the Lord was also pleased to show Brahmaji his personal abode. Srila Chiva Goswami, in the comments of his Krama Sandarbha, annotation of Srimad Bhagavatam, cites quotations from the Brihat Anarkaya Aranyaka Upanishad, Vedic evidence. It is said that Yajnavalkya described the transcendental abode of the Lord to Garga, and that the abode of the Lord is situated above the highest planet of the universe, namely Brahmaloka. This abode of the Lord, although described in revealed scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam, remains only a myth for the less intelligent class of men with a poor fund of knowledge. Herein the word Swadristavadbi is very significant. One who has actually realized his self realizes the transcendental form of one's self. Impersonal realization of self and the supreme is not complete because it is just an opposite conception of material personalities. The personality of God and the personalities of devotees of the Lord are all transcendental. They do not have material bodies. The material body is overcast with five kinds of miserable conditions, namely ignorance, material conception, attachment, hatred, and absorption. As long as one is overwhelmed by these five kinds of material miseries, there is no question of entering into the Vaikuntha Lokas. The impersonal conception of oneself is just the negation of material personality and is far from the positive existence of personal form. The personal forms of the transcendental abode will be explained in the following verses. Brahmaji also describes the highest planet of the Vaikuntha Loka as Goloka Vrindavan, where the Lord resides as a coward boy, keeping transcendental Sarabi cows and surrounded by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. Chintamani Pakara Sadma Sukopa Riksha Laksha Riteshu Sura Bira Bipala Yantam Lakshmi Sahasra Sata Sambra Masavya Manam Govinda Mari Prusham Tamaham Bajami Brahma Samita 529 The statement of the Bhagavad Gita Yad Gatva Nanivartante Tadam Paramam Mama is also confirmed herewith. Param means transcendental Brahman. 
Therefore, the abode of the Lord is also Brahman, non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord is known as Vaikuntha, and his abode is also known as Vaikuntha. Such Vaikuntha realization and worship can be made possible by transcendental form and sense. Jai Om Gyana Timananda Shyakinanjana Salakaya Chakshus Unmetamina Tasmai Shri Gurvenama Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitamina Bhutale Swai Mupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So the verse again the personality of Godhead, being thus very much satisfied with the penance of Lord Brahma, was pleased to manifest his personal abode, Vaikuntha, the supreme planet above all others. This transcendental abode of the Lord is adored by all self-realized persons, freed from all kinds of miseries and fear of illusory existence. So we're in the section <clears throat> where uh, Sukadev Goswami is answering Maharaj Prikshit's questions. And one of the questions is, what is the nature of the Lord in transcendence? So uh, this particular answer is being described in this, in this pastime of how Lord Brahma was looking for the, his source and then he went down the lotus flower, then he heard tapa and then he, then he performed austerity, following the instructions properly and then he he was revealed his penance was revealed to him he re krishna revealed himself and the spiritual world so we see that depicted here and then he wa he worshiped krishna with that prayer that we just chanted in the purport i worship govinda the primeval lord the first progenitor who is tending the cows yielding all desire in abodes built with spiritual gems surrounded by millions of purpose trees always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds of thousands of Lakshmis or Gopis. So this Chintamani that's described here is actually meant like a transcendental gem. Just like Maya, he builds the mundane universe with five material elements. So the spiritual potency, it it's, uh, builds the spiritual world out of transcendental gems. So this Chintamani serves as the building blocks to build the Supreme Lord's abode, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So, so that major portion of the shining sky, which is full of spiritual planets, and they're all Vaikuntha, they're Vaikuntas. And we see the chief of them is Goloka Vrindavan. And in the, just a little space or a little cloud of that spiritual effulgence, there's the material world, which is considered to be one quarter of God's creation. So Prabhupada refers to this verse in the purport. It's a nice verse in the Bhagavad Gita. It's 15.6. Natad basate suryo nasanko na pavakaha yad gatvana nivartante tadama paramam mama. That supreme abode is, of mine is not illumined by the sun or moon, nor by fire or electricity. Those who reach it never return to this material world. And in that purport, there's one nice paragraph I'd like to read. Prabhupada says here, One should be captivated by this information. He should desire to transfer himself to the eternal world and extricate himself from the false reflection of reality. For one who is too much attached to this material world, it is very difficult to cut that attachment. But if he takes to Krishna consciousness, there is a chance of gradually becoming detached. One has to associate himself with devotees, those who are in Krishna consciousness. One should search out a society dedicated to Krishna consciousness and learn how to discharge devotional service. Because you associate with devotees because you learn about Krishna from them. Just like Brahma learned directly from Krishna, and then in disciplic succession we learn from them, and it's handed down like that. So we associate with Krishna-conscious people. 
And he mentions the word paramama are very important here. Actually, every nook and corner is the property of the Supreme Lord. But the spiritual world is paramam. It's full of six opulences. So there's another verse in the Bhagavad Gita that describes the spiritual world, and that's in the 8th chapter, text number 20. Parastasmattu bhavonyo vyakto vyaktat sanatanaha yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nashatsu na vinashyati Yet there is another unmanifested nature, which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. So uh, just nice confirmations. So compare the austerity of Lord Brahma. He's sitting on a nice lotus flower we saw. You know, very comfortable. And he's performing, you know, meditation on Krishna. And then he begins to see Krishna. So here we see her Nikashipu. He's standing, and he's standing in a very troublesome place. Ants have, you know, created an anthill around his body and are eating his flesh. <laughs> so this is very, very painful. So Hirani Kashipu is experiencing this pain from the very beginning to the end. So you see, this is a big contrast between the devotees' austerities and the non-devotees' austerities. Simply trouble in the beginning and the end. But there's a nice prayer in the fourth canto uh, where Lord Vishnu appeared to Maharaj Pritu when he performed his sacrifice and he was showing such nice devotional qualities of a Vaishnava. It says here, My dear King, I am very captivated by your elevated qualities and excellent behavior, and thus I am very favorably inclined toward you. You may therefore ask from me any benediction you like. One who does not possess elevated qualities and behavior cannot possibly achieve my favor simply by performance of sacrifices, severe austerities, or mystic yoga. But I always remain, but I always remain equal poised in the heart of one who is also equal poised in all circumstances. So this is a good quality of a devotee. He has such good character and behavior so he wanted to offer him a benediction and how he's not satisfied by mystic yogis and all these different things. You have to become a devotee. And Prabhupada mentions the qualities of a devotee in the purport. He mentions 26. I'd just like to read those real quick. Kind to everybody, does not quarrel with anyone, fixed in the absolute truth, equal to everyone, faultless, charitable, mild, clean, simple, benevolent, peaceful, completely attached to Krishna, has no material hankerings, meek, steady, self-controlled, does not eat more than required, sane, respectful, humble, grave, compassionate, friendly, poetic, expert, and silent. So Krishna is very satisfied if we develop these transcendental qualities. <clears throat> and if we become a pure devotee, we follow the instructions of the spiritual master. That's our austerity. Like Lord Brahma, he followed the instructions of Krishna. If we follow his instructions, that's our austerity. Then we will develop these qualities. So we talked about sanklesha which means sufferings, and there's described five different kinds. And so, all throughout the Prabhupada's books, he describes these different sufferings. But there's actually more than five. So, there's a nice verse here from the first cano. This is in the fifth chapter, text 40. This is Narada Muni speaking to Vyasadeva. He said, Please therefore describe the Almighty Lord's activities, which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas, for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men, and at the same time, mitigate the miseries of the masses. So the masses, it's miseries of the masses, of common people, who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries. So, 
Narada Muni is explaining here from practical experience, <clears throat> he's asserting that the prime solution to the all problems of mature work that we experience here in the material world is to broadcast widely the transcendent glories of the Supreme Lord. And he acknowledges um, here that there's all masses of men, like there's good men, there's bad men. We know there's four types of good men. You know, they surrender to Krishna, and there's four types of bad men who never surrender to Krishna. It's described in Bhagavad Gita. But all of them, Narada Muni was concerned for all of them to become purified. <clears throat> and this is why we want to describe the glories of the Srimad Bhagavatam, of the Lord Krishna, to all these eight classes of men. Because Bhagavatam is not meant just for a particular class of sect or men. It's for the sincere soul who wants to get out of this material miseries and get peace of mind. So here's another verse. It quotes this word, Sanklesha, which refers to unlimited miseries. So simply by chanting and hearing the transcendental name, form, etc. of the personality of God is Sri Krishna, one can achieve the cessation of unlimited miserable conditions. Therefore, what to speak of those who attained attraction for serving the favor of the dust of the Lord's lotus feet. So here we see it's described as unlimited miseries. <clears throat> and we know there's different paths. There's the jnana path, you know, the, the, but there's a bhakti path. So with jnana, there's much endeavor, but with bhakti automatically we can achieve. So Prabhupada mentions in the purport there at the end, he says, the great sage Martyr now gives the final answer to all the questions of Vidura. Devotional service to the Lord is the ultimate means to mitigate all the miserable conditions of material existence. The path of knowledge, or that of mystic gymnastics, may be adopted as a means for the purpose, but unless mixed with bhakti or devotional service, they are unable to award the desired result. So this is the difference between Hiranyakashipu and Lord Brahma. Hiranyakashipu, his, he had no devotion, he had no desire to please Krishna, just himself. But Lord Brahma, he had a, that's why his austerity was called devotional service, because he was trying to please the Supreme Lord. And here's another verse, Sanklesha, which talks about the threefold miseries. <clears throat> And it's describing how the conditioned soul has a treasure house of these kinds of tribulations. It's right in the verse. The Supreme Personality Godhead, the Supreme Controller, is always full of transcendental bliss and is accompanied by the potencies known as Hladini and Samvit. The conditioned soul, however, is always covered by ignorance and embarrassed by the threefold miseries of life. Thus, he is a treasure house of all kinds of tribulations. <laughs> so this is, so this is, uh, but even though we have these miseries, actually in the first canto it's described that <clears throat> these material miseries, they're actually superfluous to him. And they can be mitigated directly by the linking process of devotional service. So don't, don't worry. <laughs> but th what happens, the problem is the mass of people don't know this. So therefore that's why Vyasadeva was ordered by Narada Muni to compile this Vedic literature, which relates to the Supreme Truth. So Vyasadeva, he saw everything. He saw Krishna, his different energies. He saw the internal energy. He saw the marginal energy. He saw everything. And he saw all his different parts and parcels, his plenary parts, his incarnations. And he saw all the unwanted miseries of the conditioned souls and how they're bewildered. And then he saw the remedy, and he knew it was the process of devotional service. So this is, we're very fortunate to have that. Here's another one here, and this is from um, the 11th canto, and it talks about how the soul, even though it's very small, and it's covered by these five kinds of air. So the atomic, the soul is atomic in size and can be perceived by perfect intelligence. This atomic soul is floating in the five kinds of air, prana, apana, vyana, samana, and udana. The soul is situated in, within the heart 
and it spreads its influence all over the body of the embodied living entities. When the soul is purified from the contamination of the five kinds of material error, so this is, we have to be purified from the contamination. It starts right from that error. Five kinds of material, its spiritual influence is exhibited. Thus, in the innumerable species of life, the spirit soul remains situated within prana, or the material air. So this is our situation here. We have five things that we're surrounded by. It's a contamination. So there's some nice lectures of Srila Prabhupada. He talks about these miserable conditions. In fact, he gave a class on this particular verse in uh, Tokyo. And he talked about, it was talking about here in the, in the purport how the material body is overcast with five kinds of miserable conditions. And Prabhupada mentions them, ignorance, material conception, attachment, hatred, absorption. And as long as we're overwhelmed with these, we cannot enter into the Vaikuntha Lokas. And then Prabhupada says, there's another five kinds of misery. And he said, it's Pavarga. It's Pa, Pa, Ba, Ba, and Ma. And to counteract it, it's called Apavarga. And Prabhupada quotes from the third canto. So, pa means hard labor. If you want to exist here, you have to work very, very hard. Just like this man with hard labor collecting some money constructed this house, now there's no tenant, another hard labor, to find out tenant. Is it not hard labor? So that's one example there. And then Prabhupada gave a, a lecture in New Vrindavan uh, from the, in the first canto, and he talks about this. He talked about the Dharma Shahi Apavargasha. And so he said he's explained several times. And in Sanskrit, there's Vargas. There's Ka Varga, Cha Varga, Ta Varga. That's Ta Varga and Ta Varga. And then there's Varga and then Pa Varga. So there's five Vargas. So Pa Varga means, as I mentioned, the Pa. Pa, Ba, Ba, and Ma. So, Prabhagans explains the same thing. How Pa is like, we have foam and you're working hard, like you see a horse foaming in the mouth. And, uh, and then Ba means by a fearfulness. And we're fearful what's going to happen. We're not sure what, it's going to be successful or not, or what could happen. And then he talks about Ma, and then which means death. So we work hard day and night, and still, what do we experience? What is there? Death. So that's what's happening. So people are tiptoeing through life, hoping that they'll arrive safely at death. <laughs> so, you know, people are fearful at every minute, so afraid to do anything. Yeah, so this is what's happening there. And then there's another lecture in LA Prabhupada gave, and he talked about the same thing, these Anuparvargas. And he mentions, just like I said, the same thing. And uh, how you can't even get, you can't even live in this world without work. And he used the example of a lion. He can't, you know, he can't just sleep there and expect a, an animal to go in his mouth. You have to work very hard. So probably uses different examples and throughout that. So Prabhupada says here, he said, um, so Pavarga and just the opposite, Apavarga, which is just the opposite. There's no labor. There's no foam. There's no frustration. There's no fear. And there is no death. That is the spiritual world. So when Prabhupada said that here in LA, all the devotees said, Jai, Haribu. So that's like Lord Brahma, he's meditating. He wasn't experiencing any foam <laughs> in his meditation. So that's nice. Let's see. And then there's another one in LA Prabhupada talked about that there's five kinds of jagyas. So we talked about all the bad qualities you're surrounded by, but there's also sinful activities, they affect you. And even you, though you may be careful, still there's five kinds of imperceptible sinful activities that we perform. And Prabhupada gives example, like when you're igniting fire, you kill entities, when you're drinking water, when you're walking, you know, so many things we're doing throughout the day, when you grind your spices, all these things are happening. And so, the uh, devotees have to perform certain yagyas to get free from these five sinful activities. 
So that's described. So continuing the five, we can't discuss them all, but here's an interesting thing. Bhaktivinoda, there's a book that he has. And let's see, what is it called? It's called the Bhaktivinoda Vani Vaibhava. And he's talking about different topics. So one of the topics, they're asking questions. And they're asking, what is the characteristics of the devotees in Vaikuntha? So we're discussing Vaikuntha. So he says there's five kinds of devotees that are eternally present in Vaikuntha. They are the Jnana Bhaktas, the Sudha Bhaktas, the Prema Bhaktas, the Prema Para Bhaktas, and the Prematura Bhaktas. So he talked to, he uses different examples like the Jnana Bhaktas is like Bart engaged in nine types of devotional service, you know, at the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh, they disregard liberation and their devotion is mixed with Jnana. The Sudha Bhaktas are like Ambarish Maharaj and the Prema Bhaktas are like Hanuman, only desire to serve the Lord with love. The Prema Para Bhaktas are like Arjuna. He's just bound by pure love for Krishna. And the Prematura Bhaktas, such as Uddhava, are always overwhelmed with their love for Krishna. So that's nice to describe there. Now, how many types of cultivation of chanting are there? So guess how many there are? There's five kinds. <laughs> so, cultivation of kirtan or chanting is extremely sublime. So that reciting the scriptures, glorifying the Lord's names and qualities, offering prayers, making humble appeals, chanting the holy names softly are the five kinds of cultivation of kirtan. So this is how it's described there. And then he's, this, now listen to this one. So can Nama Parad be compared with any sinful activity? This is how he compares it. Remember we talked about the five kinds of sinful activities? He said if you multiply those 10 million times, still it cannot be compared with Nama Parad. So that's how the powerful it is there. So there's a nice prayer we don't have time to chant it, so I'll just go to the verse that relates to today's topic. This is the verse. This is the verse. Hari Haraya Nama Krishna, the nice Nam Sankirtan. So here's one talking about five that's described by Narottamadas Thakur. Echai Goshai Jar Muitar Das Tasabada Pada Renu Mura Panchagras. I am the servant of that person who is a servant of these six Goswamis, the dust of the lotus feet is my five kinds of food stuff. So that's so nice. And then we know there's five potent forms of devotional service, and we're engaged in them, residing in Mathura or Nudorka, worshiping the deity, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, which we're doing, serving a devotee, which we're doing, chanting Hare Krishna. They're so potent that a small attachment to any one of these can arouse devotional ecstasy in the, de in the neophyte. So we'll end there and Ask you any comments, questions, realizations? Okay, thank you for your kind attention. All glories to Srimad Bhagavatam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.